uh, Romans 12, 17 through 21. It says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. And if for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I'm going to give you what I think is probably the hardest thing that a Christian will ever, and anybody, will ever do. And it is a difficult thing uh, and such, but you'll understand as we get into it. Lord, please help me now, I pray. Lord, it breaks my heart as I see Christian men that I've respected and loved and followed. Lord, it breaks my heart to see some of the things that's going on. But Lord, if it's going on amongst Christian leaders, I know it's got to be going on amongst lay people as well. So Lord, please help us. Lord, help us to be reminded of this message uh, today so that we don't fall into this trap as well. Bless, I pray, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. If I could get all the Christians in the world to listen to what I'm about to preach, I would think that probably most of the tears can be avoided. Most of the heartaches can go away. Many, if not almost all, church splits in America would probably cease. I'm going to talk and give you what I think will probably be one of the hardest things that you do in life. This message is more geared to a more mature Christian, a stronger Christian and such. Because I think the stronger Christians hold more responsibility about what I'm going to preach than the weaker Christians do. I think more mature Christians um, probably hold in your hand and will understand this more as well, um, the truth that I'm about to give you. Think about this with me, if you would. Think about our Savior. He was the King of Kings. The creator of every bird that flew through the sky. He was the creator of every beast that wandered through the jungle. It was his word that spoke and created every fish that would swim through the waters. He was the king of kings and lord of lords. An evil word never trickled from his lips. An evil thought never entered into his mind. He never trod an evil path. He never contemplated wrong. His hands never performed a wicked deed. His lips never spoke a wicked phrase. He was the perfect son of God. Of whom that was even said, even from his most bitter enemies, I find no fault in this man. Even the one who guarded him said, surely this was the son of God. He, he who had never committed a sin was indicted. He who had never committed a sin was convicted of an awful crime. He was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He had no throne but a cross. He had no golden crown but a crown of thorns. He had no subjects but a jeering mob. He had no scepter but a borrowed walking stick. He had no robe of royalty but a borrowed overcoat. He was tried and put to death. Sinful hands crucified sinless hands. Sinful lips indicted sinless lips. Sinful eyes gazed with hatred upon sinless eyes. <coughs> Sinful feet ran, uh, tried, and indicted and killed the one with sinless feet. After he'd been beaten with a cat of nine tails, they jeered. They hated him. They mocked him. They spit upon him. And they crucified him. And when he came to die, here is what he said. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Think about that. I believe that that is probably one of the hardest things that we could do in our life. He said to those whose hands had pierced his hands and feet with nails, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He said to those who cried out, crucify him, let Barabbas go. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. What Jesus was saying to us is that vengeance belongs to God. Vengeance does not belong to us. 
It's not my place, nor is it your place to seek vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It's not my job to seek vengeance. It's the Lord's job. You see, revenge is not a sweet thing. Revenge is awful. Uh, in fact, there's really no, sweet, no such thing as sweet revenge. And the hardest thing for Christians to do is to turn the other cheek and love those who hate us and to pray for those who despitefully use us and bless those that curse us and recompense no man evil for evil but render good for evil, overcome evil with good. The hardest thing in the world for a Christian to do is be like Christ. I'm talking to many of the strong Christians. I'm talking to the ones who are the mature ones. Because I think many times it's up to them to make sure things don't get divided. I know that myself in, in my life there have been times when I've got to the point where I, I wanted to get back at people. I've done that even as a Christian. And to be honest with you, later I felt very bad that I did. Very bad. Um, there's no good taste from getting back. I've tasted what it's like to have the forgiveness of God. It's a great thing. And I've tasted what it is to have the the garbage of being avenging myself. And I may say that there is no comparison. Um, I want us to think about and keep in our minds the to have that appetite for forgiveness. I I I know I have and, and the more in leadership you are, the more more enemies it seems to you. And every time you make this, any time you're in a position of leadership, you have and have to make decisions. You have you will have enemies. It's just going to happen. But all of us do. And the truth of the matter is, the more we serve Christ, the more we take a stand for Christ, the more we're going to have. It's just going to happen. It's just going to be there. But if we're going to be what we ought to be, we've got to let God take care of it, and we just got to forgive. I heard and I've said it before, you know what, I'll get him back. I'll, I'll take care of that. And the truth of the is, for us Christians, we, we can't do that. We have to leave this up to God. Um, and, 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 and even in times where it's obvious, you might be on the right and they might be in the wrong. But being the stronger Christian what we need to do is we need to get back up and let God take care of it. But I'll tell you what can happen if you don't. Um, one, many times we don't know everything. We don't know everything, the story. We don't know, certainly don't know motive. We don't know people's hearts. And sometimes we even have the wrong person. And we pick the wrong person. And give vengeance to the wrong one. But yet God knows all. God knows all thoughts. God knows all hearts. And God knows who is the only one that would. Who needs that vengeance. God also knows when it should happen. God knows this. God, God knows when it's best to do uh, and such. He also knows what kind of a, a, a vengeance they, a, a person might need. What they might need. God knows best. So what we need to do is we need to give it to God. Put it in God's hands. Let him take care of those things. The difference between God and us many times is we get angry enough that we want to kill him. God wants to help him. We want to hurt him. But God wants to salvage him. Um, God knows who needs the vengeance. And when they need the vengeance and the vengeance they need in order to save them or salvage them. God knows it. You see, it's my job to fight the battles for God. But it's God's job to fight the battles for me. Right. we got to understand that. Right. Uh, I'm to stand for truth. 
But I can stand for truth without hurting people. I can stand for truth without seeking vengeance on those against truth. I think of Joseph was a perfect example of that. Joseph, you know, was sold by his brother. Then when he, he, he uh, became, uh, uh, was in Potiphar's house and uh, was falsely accused, put in prison. He um, then told and, and interpreted dreams and, and uh, interpreted the dreams and, and uh, the, the, the butler was to uh, uh, take care of uh, Joseph when he got out. Forgot to do it. Then Joseph's brothers come. It's been years. And Joseph's brother now comes. Now the truth of the matter is. If you read the story there. You'll find that Joseph. I think there was a little bit. A, a time there. Where Joseph was wanting some vengeance. When he had one of his brothers stay back. And, and uh, to go get Benjamin. And when he gave Benjamin the bigger portions. And then when he conspired for, to get to Benjamin to stay back and everything by putting his cup in, in Benjamin's bag and the money and everything. I think Joseph, even at that point, was trying to do a little bit and have a little bit of vengeance. But when Joseph then, when the brothers came back and Joseph saw them all crying and such, I believe Joseph had a changed heart. And that's when he told them the story. And that's when he, he told them these things. But we need to get... And be like the latter part of Joseph. Where we say, you know what? God will take care of that. You guys thought, just remember after after uh, 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 Jacob, or uh, uh, after he died and, and, and such. And, and uh, 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 the, the brothers were afraid. And uh, Joseph said, hey, you know what? You know, God thought this, God worked this out. It was supposed to, all this worked out for God for good. See, Joseph had a change of heart. You see, I'm to fight God's battles and God's to fight mine. Revenge is, is a very terrible thing and very wicked for us to try to do. Um, every one of us in here have enemies or probably if you don't, then I, then more power to you, but uh, then you've probably never stood for anything in your life if you don't, okay? It just happens. It happens. And when you stand for something, there's going to be somebody that will oppose you. But those enemies, we have to get to a point where we let God take care of them. Because God can get uh, and take care of them better than us. I'm not saying that when uh, somebody is... is uh, Taking salvation and turning salvation into a work salvation or changing major Bible doctrines. I'm not saying you don't take a stand. You make sure you preach and, and take a stand for truth. You make sure of that. And I'm not, I, that's, 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 there, there, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think we need to take and not be personally unkind to those who do. I think during this election season, maybe this is why. I, I think we're going to see this in a lot of Christians during this election season. I think there's going to be a lot amongst the Christians, a lot of Christians fussing and fighting and be at odds and, and, and such at one another. I, I you know, I, I, I think we ought to stand for right, but don't be unkind to others because we might disagree. Let God take care of those who do wrong. Remember David? David was a good example of letting God take care of things. David could have killed Saul twice. But he wouldn't put his hand against God's anointed. Now, honestly, I have enemies today. None that I've really sought out to, do, to have. None that I hate. And honestly and truly, none that I wouldn't help. There, I, would, I would help anybody that I could. The hardest things we'll ever do in our life is when someone attacks us or does us wrong is forgive them and love them and pray for them and bless them. But that's the way the Bible wants us to do it. That's what he set up here in Romans. When they do wrong and they've done you wrong and you're completely right, 
let God take care of it. You just love. You just pray. And you pray for God to bless them. And let God take care of things. So today, what I want to do is I want to give you some things to do when you are wronged. And I think it can help. Number one, we're not to retaliate. We're not to retaliate. And I hear this, you know, well, you don't know what they did. No, but I do know what we did to Christ. And Jesus still forgave. Now, people will retaliate in different ways. Some people will retaliate by hurting people physically. Most Christians will not get to that point. Most of them don't. However, I believe we do do a, 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 a couple other things. We hurt them mentally. Some Christians will hurt them mentally. They'll not talk to them. They'll snob them. They'll give little jab remarks. Little remarks that, that only they would know the, uh, that uh, that person, you know, will take it, the, you know, that it, this is a jab. Um, and then they can hurt them spiritually. And this is one of the things that Christians do many times. And they criticize their ministries or they criticize their motives. Well, they're only doing that because... And they start criticizing. So we have to be careful not to retaliate. We also have to do good to them. We have to do good to them. I think this is very important. If you don't do good to them, what will happen is you will end up building vengeance in your heart. That's the part of doing good is the healing part. The praying for them is the healing part. Praying for God to bless them is the healing part. Because if you don't do that, you will eventually get bitterness and vengeance in your heart for that person. That's just how you heal from those who have hurt you. And number three, we're to defend truth in others. If others have been hurt or being hurt... I think we can defend as a friend or a, a loved one. I think we can defend, but we must defend in the way that is in a Christian way. I think we must be careful about that. But especially truth. We can defend truth. I have chosen, when I'm talking about this here on, on a matter of because of this is happening between a couple of preachers whom I have much, very much respect for. I've chosen to be silent on both. Be silent on both. Because I think it's something that they need to work together to, to work out. And I think the more people that get involved in it, the more complicated it gets. And so as a friend to both, and out of love for both, I have done everything I have could to try to be silent. And I think sometimes that's the best thing. But number four, we're not to get sidetracked. Many times the devil likes to take these things and get us sidetracked. He likes to take these things and get us off track and off the beaten track. We got to understand the when, the reason why we're here is to win the loss and salvage lives. That's why we're here. It's all about Christ, getting the gospel to a lost and dying world. If we get too sidetracked in all these other things, we get too much into all those other things, we start losing the whole purpose of why we're here. Look, I, many of us can, we'll, if we're honest with ourselves, you'll know whether you have a problem with somebody, if you're really, truly honest. Now, here's the thing, you can, you could forgive somebody and, 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 and such, and you could treat them right and do all this, but that doesn't mean that they're going to respond to that. 
But at least you're right. At least you know that you have done what you're supposed to do. And then it's up to God to take care of the rest. But at least you have taken and you have done the right thing. At least you can lay your head on your pillow. At least your relationship with God is not suffering. At least you can do that. And that's when you have to take and, and let God take care of it. Now the truth of the matter is. If there's somebody that you could think of. That would walk, would walk in this door right now. Those doors. And sit down. And by sitting down by you would spoil your mood then you haven't truly taken care of it with God on your side. I've heard people say, Preacher, you know what? I'll forgive them, but I'm not going to forget what they did. If you've that, gotten that to that point, if you're at that point, you've really never truly fully forgiven. Because it's... It, 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 look... I've heard people tell me this. You know, I've forgiven them. I've forgiven them. I've forgiven them. I've forgiven them. And then as they go on, they keep bringing up what they did. I've forgiven, preacher. I've forgiven them. Well, you know, I, I'm okay. I'm okay with them. But, you know, they did this and 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 this. Well, then you're not okay with them. you got to be honest. Let it go. Let it go. Well, you see, we do have the ability to forget. We just don't have the ability to erase. Joseph forgot. You realize for over six years, almost seven years at least, Joseph forgot about all that his brothers did to him. And all the toil when he was falsely accused. That's why he called his firstborn Manasseh, Manasseh. Because his God had allowed me to forget of those things that were before. Think about that. It wasn't until his brothers came back into the scene seven years later that Joseph then brought those, brought those memories back up. But he did forget for six or seven years. So we can forget. So when one says, you know what, I, I, I've forgiven them. But every time you talk to them, they bring up the same thing. Then they really haven't forgiven. You've got to be honest with yourself. Be honest. We need to take and learn this subject of forgiving. I am, I am saddened when... Preachers are fussing and fighting and doing things and, and, and such. It saddens me. When there's so much animosity between preachers. I don't like it. I don't like it. Because the truth of the matter is, we should be the examples. We should be the examples. But I know that I have dealt with this in counseling and such as well and I know if it's if it's doing that with preachers I know it's affecting lay people as well usually more so usually more so it's not an easy thing to do no matter what people have done to you even if they don't respond well when you do the right thing the key is you keep on doing right. And you keep on doing right. And you keep on doing right. Because if you don't, you will fall into that trap. And pretty soon your heart will be to a point where you have vengeance. Want to have vengeance on those people. And that is a dangerous, dangerous spot for a Christian to be. Dangerous. The hardest thing you'll ever do. Jesus did it. And he never did anything wrong. Never. 
we too need to be that forgiven. Let's pray. Lord, I pray you please just bless. Lord, I pray you please help us, Lord. Please. Help us to be what we ought to be for you. Help us, Lord, to forgive the way you forgive. Help us, Lord, to not to fall into those things. When somebody wrongs us or does us wrong, help us, Lord, please, to have a forgiving heart. When somebody, when we've done something wrong and we know it, help us to get it right. May we never be on the wrong side of the fence in this area. Please, God, help, I pray. Please, speak to every heart. Help us, Lord, I pray. Please.